Hello everyone, today I'm going to review the Huawei Accent XT prepaid phone from AT&T. Uh, the good part about this phone is um, that it has a 6 inch screen and it has 16 gigs of uh, internal memory, 2 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's on running on Android Marshmallow 6.0.1. It has an 8 megapixel front facing, uh, sorry, the, the back camera is 8 megapixel. The selfie camera is 2 megapixel. And it's actually a Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, phone. No fingerprint sensor uh, on this phone, unfortunately. And um, the charging port is uh, a standard micro USB and not uh, uh, USB-C. So in terms of the construction, the phone feels pretty uh, solid. It's a bit heavy. Um, it's a fingerprint magnet. It has a nice texture back. Uh, there's no scratches, but it's just my uh, fingerprint. So as you can see, uh, the nice texture, but uh, at the same time, it's kind of a fingerprint magnet. Um, Here's a flash as the phone and here's the model number, the brand AT&T logo and branding in the front. Um, fairly simple. Um, you have the microphone on the top and the front selfie camera. And um, on the right side, uh, we have the power button and the volume rocker. Uh, on the left, we have the, the micro SD and the SIM card slot. Um, let it focus. Yeah. So as you can see, so you need a SIM eject tool um, to take the SIM card out and uh, let's uh, go in and see the interface. Yeah, the screen, even though it's a 720 pixel uh, screen on a 6 inch, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, it's, it's uh, let me unlock this. So as you can see, the screen is uh, um, bright enough. Uh, it's not super bad and the resolution is still okay um, I mean I'll bring it close as you can see focus it's not super grainy or anything I mean yeah it's not the best resolution out there but for 720p on a 6 inch this is pretty good um, now in terms of the software so this is a YE phone and that's why you know it runs its own special uh, like Samsung has its touch base, where he has its own emotion UI. And uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of that, you know, this UI. So it's uh, 4.1 and unfortunately uh, it's still running Android 6. There's no Android 7 update yet for this phone. And it's running this uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 616 processor with 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs uh, in build. And uh, I'm going to show you one more thing. This uh, Emotion UI, it's very heavy, so it takes up a lot of space and it kind of has this fake iPhone-ish uh, look, uh, which some people might like, but I'm not too fond of it. I'm, I generally tend to like uh, plain vanilla stock Android. Um, what I did was I um, replaced the stock launcher with the Google Now launcher and uh, disable some of the AT&T bloatware and install all the Google versions of the different apps that I can find and um, uh, the keyboard especially. So after doing all that mods, the phone um, uh, looks, uh, it's still usable. Uh, before that I felt it was, uh, even though I had no app, much app, apps installed or doing anything uh, heavy, I felt the, the phone was uh, lagging a bit, so it was not very fluid, so it was kind of a disappointment because this phone is um, $79 and it's supposed to be a subsidized price because it's uh, under the AT&T prepaid, so it's locked to AT&T and uh, so it's kind of a subsidized rate for the phone and for $80, but you know, there are a lot of phones like um, I had the Moto E4. Uh, Verizon version which was only $40 and that phone seemed to be a much much faster uh, because it runs the stock vanilla Android compared to this uh, way emotion crap so
once again let me unlock it and uh, okay so now going into the details so you swipe down you have your uh, regular options for Wi-Fi Bluetooth and then screen rotations to turn uh, toggle for your mobile mobile data um, then the sound modes flashlight airplane and then you can take a screenshot so there's a shortcut for it then if you swipe you have all your notification menus so it's a weird thing that they do date on the top and then you the notification i don't have as many notifications uh, so that's why i cannot show you um, how it looks and then you have an option you will see a trash can that you hit to clear off all the notifications now going into the settings uh, again uh, standard settings um, let's see what's more so you have tethering and hotspot only works if you have an at and sim card in the phone and you have the hotspot plan enabled on that uh, home screen gives you two different views so simple will give you the icon uh, i mean the standard would give you the um, icons which is uh, as you can see and if you want to do the simple it has kind of a windows uh, tile uh, look then uh, under display you can choose the wallpaper font size and font style there's not much i mean there's only one font style that was there and um, in terms of size you can uh, make the font size smaller or larger as a daydream indicator light so there's a notification led on the top which is kind of cool uh, so it blinks and changes color depending on what kind of notification you have and you have brightness adjustments and um, you know sleep time auto rotation wireless display so basically if you wanted to connect to any miracast device you can still do that and then one pretty cool thing where you can um, change the warmth of the screen so it's not automatic so there's no blue light filter but you can come to the screen and manually set it up if you want um, to turn uh, have turn on the blue light um, then pretty much your sound uh, settings you I mean you have an option to select the ringtones different kinds of sounds turn on and turn those off uh, then you have the notification panel so this is what like a way you wants to so all your notification is like if granular control of your notifications are there based on app and I'll just try and show you how it works so basically so you can turn the notification on or off and you can set if it's a priority notification or not so it will show up on the top of if you have multiple notifications if this is on the priority list then it will show up on the top then you can also choose if you want the notification to be displayed in the status bar or come as banner on the status bar or on the lock screen so you have those options and uh, same for uh, all the apps and uh, you have a choice to show the battery percentage and either you can uh, show it inside the battery or next to the battery icon right now i have set it up inside the battery because that's what i like i didn't want it uh, more uh, that battery percentage taking up more space um going back now then you have your lock screen settings so you can set up your passwords here and then you have smart assistance so that's basically accessibility settings um then you have this dnd mode um so basically this is part of the android uh, 6 so you can set up time time different time zones and different uh your sound modes your phone will automatically follow that rule and uh, do that i haven't really tried this rule settings so i don't know if this is okay time rule and event rule so if you do an event let me see what event if it's like a tasker app uh, okay so it's based on calendar events okay that's stupid um or maybe yeah so if you have a meeting on the calendar setup and it's synced up maybe that would work then you have your accounts where you can configure the different accounts that you want to sign in then you have your settings for your google account and uh, then apps uh, so here you can disable or uninstall apps from here then you have advanced settings um, so basically your date and time 
language and input uh, so the and then memory and storage so this is what i want to wanted to show you so this phone i don't really have much apps so but if you look at it so out of 16 gigs uh, the app 8 gigs is almost taken up by the os so we user usable memory on this phone is only 8 gigs so it says total 8.55 the rest of it is all eaten up by the motion ui which is pretty sad because 50 percent of your storage space has gone into uh, the us um. and then you have your battery manager so this also has an ultra power saving board and then you can set some options for certain apps uh, which it uh, stay in the memory or they will uh, get killed after a certain period of time then you have your security options um, you know your sim card lock device administrators and stuff like that and then location access uh, it's funny because um, your assistive things and your I, I felt like this accessibility settings and your assistive uh, settings uh, were exactly the same thing I don't know why they have that but it's uh, different settings and they have different headers and then your standard backup and reset um, then I have enabled the developer options and then we have AT&T software update um, so the way AT&T works is you need to have an AT&T active sim card on your phone um, before it your phone can connect to an AT&T server and download the updates that's one of the worst things if you have an AT&T branded phone you never get an update if you are not on AT&T service it's pretty better it's actually better on T-Mobile because uh, T-Mobile doesn't uh, do that based on a SIM card I don't know if they started doing that but you know previously uh, they didn't so even if it didn't matter if you have had a T-Mobile phone was not uh, didn't had an active t-mobile sim in it it will still uh, get the updates when they were available and then about this phone brings you to the model number the build number the motion ui version so i think the latest the emotion ui version is six um the, some of the phones like honor uh, 6s has emotion uh, ui 5 this is even older this is four th this is uh, really crappy compared to the new ones the new ones are better so i think you worked on that and they made it more uh, just like samsung they kind of tamed it down a little bit uh, and it's uh, more more fluid um, and then you have your resolution 720 uh, by 1280 um, android patch level is from june 2017 then baseband version and all that other stuff so as now when you see i mean after i replace a stock launcher disable some of the bloatware uh, if you see it, it's not super bad i mean uh, it's not as laggy uh, as out of the box but let me tell you a few things i had to do with the phone so the first thing that i did is, is i went ahead and unlocked the bootloader then i flashed a custom recovery twrp and then I flashed a deep bloated version of the B160 um, ROM. So this is a stock ROM. There's no, it's not a custom ROM. Uh, there's barely much custom ROMs available on XGA forum. So I decided to stay as close to the stock as possible without the bloatware. And um, then this ROM also has a systemless root built in. So I have that and um, rom also replaced some of the built-in apps like the dialer app which was horrendous from hawaii uh, so with this uh, simpler dialer which is very androidish like uh, stock vanilla android and kind of simple i like that and um, the remaining apps i basically downloaded from google play store and using them so i'll show you uh, some of how bad the way apps are so this is the messaging app which is inbuilt if you click on that you see how that is and then so i mean this is uh gboard so it's uh, I, it's got replaced so it's not super bad versus you know i like this interface which is so much cleaner and nicer um but it's uh, again comes down to the preference so that's the gallery app 
um, not super fast, uh, but okay. When I had a micro SD card and I was accessing the photos that was stored in the car, stored in the card, uh, I felt there was definitely a lag uh, while trying to access the files in the in the micro SD card. Maybe due to the size limitation. So theoretically, um, way he says that this phone can take only up to 32 gig card but i had a 64 gig card and i installed it and it worked fine but it was probably a bit slower maybe due to that so other than that um, in terms of call quality pretty basic uh, speaker volume okay -ish. Um, camera quality pretty bad i mean uh, compared to most of these uh, phones these days even cheaper phones they have half a decent uh, camera um, but this is so this will be okay if you want to take a picture of a scene or you know a landscape uh, it would work pretty good but uh, you won't get much details on it so i uh, replace the stock camera with this open camera module and after playing with the settings i was able to make it a little better but don't expect a lot of uh, details uh, to be captured from the camera so it's kind of has that watercolor effect both on the front camera and the back camera and you lose uh, lot of uh, details from the image uh, but if you are taking a landscape picture it might be okay but uh, like if I wanted to take uh, the text a picture of all the text out here it's pretty close right and I'll show you how bad it can be so so there you go and you saw the lag I mean and then I'm in this picture let's see open that up so as you can see it's not uh, it's okay i mean i can i can read the text when i zoom in it's not super bad uh, but uh, i was trying to capture you know the the edges of the screen protector on my note 8 um, i'm gonna do the review of this armor suite um, screen protector i just installed it in my note 8 and i was not super happy about it uh, I was trying to take pictures, uh, you know, to upload to Amazon and give my review. And these are the pictures I take took with this camera. And I was like, mm. I mean, there's not much details. So I don't know if it would help for the review purpose. So that's about it. And before we finish, I'll talk about... So as you can see, I already unlocked the phone. So it's running on T-Mobile. Um, call quality is good uh, but unfortunately no Wi-Fi calling um, because the ROM is uh, AT&T so it doesn't let uh, Wi-Fi calling on a T-Mobile SIM. In terms of battery life uh, it's very average it's not super bad uh, it's a 3000 milliamp power battery so it would last you uh, the whole day um, but there is a problem with the phone is that even if you keep the phone turned off it still uses the battery so you cannot so if you were like you know had 25 percent battery and you were at school and you wanted to turn it off so that you could wanted to use the phone after you got off from the class it wouldn't help you because even if you turn it off it just eats up the battery i don't know i mean i had it's not just a defect with my particular phone or this particular phone i had multiple phones uh, from the same model and all of them have the same issue so yeah so not perfect but if you want a cheap replacement with a if you're looking for a phablet but you don't want to spend a lot this could be a basic smartphone uh, if you can live with a little bit of lag or if you are an advanced user you can go to xda and do the same things that i did okay guys uh, that's pretty much everything about this huawei uh, ascent xt uh, do leave your comments um, and uh, suggestions and feedback. Subscribe to my channel and uh, I'll see you in the next review. Thank you.